What's up, everybody? So uh, I get to uh, film a quick lesson for you here, which I'm sure is just going to add to all the uh, awkward teacher videos that you're going to be watching or that you've already watched. I think uh, I've heard some teachers have already made them. So um, yeah, we're gonna try and make this work. I think, you know, if you do the math, there's only going to be like four or five of these until the end of the year. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. I'll try and edit this up and uh, put some background music and be my usual silly weird self. For the most part, you won't be looking at me. You'll probably be looking down at uh, the paper that I'm working on while I'm taking you through some practice problems. That's about it. Hope you're all doing well. I certainly do miss the routine of uh, coming to school every day and seeing you guys, and I'm sure actually you guys do too. We'll get it done. Here's video number one. All right, eighth grade, when we left off, we were solving by substitution. And what I'm gonna do right now is introduce you to solving systems by what's called elimination. And why is it called elimination? Because you are quite literally going to be eliminating one of the variables from the system, and then you'll be on your way to finding the solution. So most students prefer the elimination method to uh, substitution, but, 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 you guys are learning it a little bit differently here, and maybe that won't be the case. I don't know. Can I zoom in here? Look at that. I can't. Beautiful. It says here, solve the system by elimination. So we know how to graph this. We'd have to solve it for y, throw these guys over, graph both lines, intersection, we get it, all right? And we know how to do substitution, although on this particular one, substitution wouldn't be fun because neither, and none of these variables, I should say, have an, a one in front of it. So this would be pretty ugly. We can solve this using the elimination method very, very easily because if you look here at these y's, they both have a six in front, don't they? One's a negative, one's a positive, but that doesn't matter. They're both a six there, all right? And we can eliminate this y variable. We can make it go away by adding these two equations together, okay? Why would that make it eliminate? Because what happens when you add a negative six to a positive six? What do you get when you add opposites? You get zero. And if you have zero y's, that means you have no y's and you've eliminated the y's, okay? And that's exactly what it says here if you read step one. Since the coefficients, that's the numbers in front, of y are additive inverses, they're opposites. You can add these two equations to eliminate the y. And look, that's exactly what they do here. But you have to do that to everything. So we are adding the whole first equation to the entire second equation. 5x plus 3x gives us 8x's. Right here in red is the step we were just talking about. Negative six plus positive six is zero. They probably could have even put a Y right here, zero Y's, but it doesn't matter because that's still zero, okay? And it's gone now. It has been eliminated. Over here, you have to do negative 32 plus 48. Make sure you use your calculator. Negative 32 plus 48 is 16. So they kind of sort of, I don't want to say skip a step here, but what we now have is that 8X equals 16. If you divide both sides by 8, what do you get? X equals two. I'll do this over on a piece of paper in a minute and you'll see kind of how the steps should look showing a little bit more of the work. Now we're not done. We're only half done. Remember, whenever you're solving a system, you have to find X and Y. We've only found X. So now we just plug it back in. We actually do a little substitution right here. X is two. So choose one of these equations. Doesn't matter which one you choose, the first one or the second one and plug in X being two. So we chose the first one here, 5x minus 6y equals negative 32. Plug in the 2. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 minus 6y equals negative 32. And again, they've got a lot of steps skipped here. If we subtract 10 from both sides, you'll get negative 6y equals negative 42. And if you divide by negative 6, you'll get positive 7. All right. I wish they would have shown a little bit more of the steps there. But nonetheless, we will now show you this one right here. Here's the system we're gonna solve using elimination, all right? And I'm gonna show you every single step. We have to eliminate either the X variable or the Y variable. Well, we have to look and see which one of them has the same number in front. Do the Ys this time have the same number in front like they did in that other problem in the book? No, four and two are not the same. But our Xs 
they both have a three. Now, one's positive, one's negative. That doesn't matter. All we care about is that the number is the same because we can eliminate either way. If they're opposites like this, we eliminate by adding. If they are the same, well, then we would just eliminate by subtracting. We are going to, because these are opposites, we are going to add because we want to get zero. I like to use parentheses just as a little visual cue to know that I'm adding the entire thing there. 3x plus negative 3x. It eliminates. It's gone. It's zero. That's the whole reason we're doing this, is to eliminate. 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 Now, 4 plus 2 is going to be 6y. Notice I'm not writing the zero here, because I don't have to. It's just extra writing I don't have to do. It's gone. And if it's gone, I don't need to write anything. 16 plus 8 is 24. So now we are here. We eliminated the x all by just adding these two equations together. We eliminated the x, and then we got 6y and 24. Divide by the 6, and y is going to equal 4. And now we got to go find x. So we have to choose one of these two original equations here. It doesn't matter which one you choose. I'm going to choose this top one because everything's positive. And now we're going to plug in here. So let me just rewrite it. I just rewrote it. That's all I did. I'm going to take what y equals, and I'm going to plug it in for y. So 3x plus 4 y equals 16, 3x plus 16 equals 16, subtract 16 from both sides, 3x equals 0, which means x equals 0. And now we are done. The solution to this system is 0, 4. 0, 4. All right, let's do another one. This one's actually really interesting because I could actually eliminate X or Y. Don't the X's both have ones in front of them? We can't see them, but we know they're ones. And don't the Y's also have ones in front of them? One's positive, one's negative, but it's the same number. So we could actually eliminate either X or Y here. We could eliminate X by subtracting because X minus X is zero, or we could eliminate Y by adding because one plus a negative one is zero. I'm actually gonna eliminate X here by subtracting just because we haven't done that yet. X minus X, gone. Y, now watch your signs here, minus a negative Y. When we subtract the negative, what do we end up doing? Adding, so this is Y plus Y two y's and then 12 minus 2 is 10 divide by the 2 and y equals 5 rewrite one of these original equations up here plug the y that we just found in x plus 5 equals 12 subtract the 5 from both sides and x equals 7 final answer here 7 comma 5 Seven comma five. First question you ask yourself here, and you should do this, like maybe like pause the video after I ask the question. Which variable can we eliminate? In the previous problem, we could only eliminate, we could eliminate either one, the one we just did. But this one, that's not the case. Only one of these variables can be eliminated right now. Do you know which one it is? Do you know what you're looking for to answer that question? I said it earlier. What you're looking for is the coefficient. You're looking for the numbers in front to be the same. Do the x's have the same numbers in front? This x has a one in front. This x has a two in front. Is a two the same as a one? No, but our y's, they both have a one in front. So we can eliminate the y's here because they have the same number in front. Second question you need to ask yourself is, how can I eliminate? And that has to do with whether the signs are the same or different. These signs are the same. It's a positive one and a positive one. How do I get a zero that way? Well, I'd have to subtract. So when the signs are the same, you subtract to eliminate. When the signs are different, you add to eliminate. So, you know, maybe you want to just add that as a little note, all right? It's a quick little side note for you. All right, so we are going to subtract. And again, I always like to use my parentheses. There we go. Now watch your signs here. Negative one minus negative two. When you subtract a negative, you are adding. So this is negative one plus two, which is positive one X. Y minus Y eliminates. That's why we did it. Four minus two is two, and hey, wouldn't you look at that? We're done. 
x equals two. We don't have to do any division step here because we got a one. Now let's rewrite one. I can't rewrite it over here because I did the notes. So I'll just go work down here. Negative x plus y equals four. Take what we just found, put it in right there. So negative two plus y equals four. Add that two over, y equals six. Final answer, two comma six. All right, I know that's not an ideal way to learn. Trust me, this is uh, not anybody's first choice on how we'd be doing this. There'll be some guided notes and some practice. You give it a shot and uh, see you later.